Hi, this is Tim with Bird Appliance. Today we're looking at a Kenmore side-by-side -side fridge with an LSU sticker on it. Uh, this one is having some trouble cooling. There's absolutely no cooling in it. First thing you want to do for this style or this problem is check to see if the fans are running. On most models, older models anyway, if you open the door, you should be able to feel back here and feel if there's a fan blowing. If that fan's not blowing, this is not going to solve your problem. Also, uh, you may need to hit a switch, some door switch somewhere on here. In the case of this one, it's right here. Sometimes that'll turn the fan on. On this one, it doesn't matter. But anyway, we're looking for a fan. Back here in the back, it's going to be room temperature. It's not going to be cold at all. Uh, if you see that, then we need to go to the back of the fridge and take a look at what's going on with the compressor. <laughs> Alright, what you see back here is your compressor and you see your condenser fan. That fan, if it's spinning, it's typically on the same circuit as your compressor. So if you see that spinning, your compressor should also be on. What you want to do is touch the compressor. You can just touch it lightly. It may be hot, so just be careful. It's not going to be super hot. If it's cool, uh, if you don't feel it vibrating at all, um, you probably have a compressor that's not turning on. In the case over here, while you're checking it, if you hear a clicking sound, maybe it clicks or tries to start, then you don't hear anything. You wait another few minutes, you hear another click. That means we've got a problem here with the relay. It also could mean there's a problem with the compressor itself. You want to cross your fingers that the problem is here at the relay. There was the click right there. Uh, if it's a problem with the relay, you can fix that. We're going to show you how. If not, you've got an issue with the compressor. It's really not repairable. It's a little difficult to uh, show you how to test the compressor. Uh, you know, we can show you with a multimeter and all that. You'll see that online. We just want to show you the other side, how to repair this. And the part's not too expensive, so it's worth a try. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and show you how to take this apart and put on a, uh, what they call a three-in-one star relay kit. All right, first things first, make sure your refrigerator is unplugged. Once you get it unplugged, we're going to be going into this section. You got to get this cover off of the box. You just need to prime a little bit, figure out where the thing is held on. It should come off. Just got to kind of work on it a little bit. I usually have some snaps in the back. Here it goes. Not always easy. All right. Once you get the cover off, this is a combination of three things. Oh, just two on this one. So what you got is an overload uh, protector and a start relay. We don't need those anymore. They're going to be included in this 3-in-1 kit. So we're going to go ahead and get those off. Again, you have the power off. You're going to have three prongs on here. You want to be gentle. It doesn't really matter if you break them. You're tossing them anyway, but let's be gentle with the prongs. Just twist the screwdriver back and forth to get everything started. So you don't damage it. You just want to be gentle. They're probably going to crack and break. There you go. Alright, so what you're going to see is three prongs. These three prongs are uh, a start winding, a common winding, and a run winding. Not really necessary to know that, but when you purchase a kit, a three-in-one kit, you're typically going to have a diagram of how to hook it up. All right, you're looking at the three terminals on the compressor. You can see there's two on top and one on the bottom. That's all you really need to know to get this done. The one that's by itself is your common. It's going to be the it's on the bottom in this one. It's going to be the black line that you have on your 3-in-1 start kit. Um, when you look at your 3-in-1, it's right here. These two are for your power that are connected to these. And the black, white, and red that are on the opposite side are the ones that are going to be connected to your compressor. So again, the black is on the single point on the bottom, or in some cases, this is flipped around and there's a single on the top. That would be the black. In our case, just to keep this simple, it's black here, and because we have a uh, because we have the uh, two on the top. 
you're going to want to have a white line on this side and a red on the other. And again, you can always refer back to your chart that should be in your installation instructions and should take care of it. So we're going to go ahead and get that on. Just be gentle, but make sure that none of these are touching each other and also that they're on nice and tight. You might have to give them a pretty good push. Like that is one. Don't break them. Push them straight. All right, now you've got the other end. Again, this kit replaces the start relay and the overload protector, which are right here. And it also contains a capacitor. Just in case this compressor is starting to go bad, it's going to give it an extra kick. We don't know again, but this could be the case. Now, this repair may last three weeks if it's really just a bad compressor, or it could last, you know, for a long time, a few years, just depending on what the problem was. So we're going to go ahead and get this off. Strip them back about a half an inch or so. And you got these here. It's not polarity doesn't matter on this, so you can use either black for the red and either black and the other black for the white. It's not important. Take your wire nuts. Go ahead and twist them just to make sure you have a nice connection. All right, and that should be it. So now you've got your 3 in 1 start kit connected to the voltage, and then your three lines here running into the compressor. This should be enough to get a kick started. We're going to see if we can get this thing to turn on. So at this point, just make sure nothing's touching in here. They're all nice and separated. You don't have any loose wires, and you can go ahead and plug it in. And it started right up. So, in this case, again, hopefully this lasts a long time. Can't be positive how it's going to work, but we did find the solution, so this should be a working fridge. Thanks again. This is Tim with Bird Appliance.